Welcome to the Special Delivery Podcast. I am your host, Special. And on this show, I like to do one of two things. Either I'm delivering you brand new music that's dropped, or I'm sitting down with artists to break down everything you don't know and should know about their latest project. And that's what we're doing today. Cautious Clay joins me to break down his latest project, Resonance. And we talk about every single track, plus him producing it. And he even dealt with all my crazy interpretations of his songs. And we talk about his next project, Table of Context. So let's get into it. Yay, Cautious Clay is here. How you doing? I'm doing great. That's so good. I'm so happy to have you here. Before we get into Resonance, I want to take it way, way back. The Toro y Moi cover, so many details. Yeah. One of my favorite songs, and the way you covered it was just incredible. behind choosing that song and covering it yeah i mean toro and was like one of my favorite artists ever and so i just kind of have always respected him and the kind of like loved his approach to music and in kind of like a very boundless approach to it you know like he'll put out something that's more like an eagles record and then he'll put out something that's more like dancey but it never feels like it's it's adopting it in, in a way that's uh kitschy you know so I think I think that's always been like my uh, my like my approach as well is I can try to navigate different spaces and it doesn't feel as though I'm trying to sound like something else. Um, so I think that like he's always inspired me as an artist who does that. So like that was really why I, I decided on that record and I loved it too. It was like one of my favorites and I was just like cool like let me let me do my own interpretation of that and. At the time, I was mostly just doing remixes and producing beats for friends and things. So that was like a big part of my initial like step into songwriting, really, was just like doing that cover. I love that. Yeah, both of you are so genuine to where everything that you create feels like it's from you. So like you said, you can pretty much go all over the map and kind of make anything and it feels like you and it doesn't feel weird you know what i mean because it's like you guys make genuine music so that's super super cool i really i remember listening to blood type and thinking that your songwriting is a gorgeous way to say kind of what we don't want to there are certain things that we may think but we don't want to say out loud especially you know saying like oh i think loneliness is going to be good for us do you kind of have a certain approach when you're writing to kind of i know you talk about how if you're going to write about love kind of go at it at a different angle a different sound do something differently what's that thought process like when you're writing yeah i mean i'm i'm a big fan of words and love like that about the music so like I think that my approach is going to be, yeah, like, like almost like you just said, it's like if you're talking about things that might seem conventional or maybe it's not things that are conventional, but different ideas about things that are conventional, if that makes sense. So like if you kind of have that sentiment, writing from that sentiment makes it a lot more interesting because you can use words that might not go together, like, you know, loneliness will serve as well or like black boys wrapped in plastic like those different words that would feel kind of like maybe uncomfortable for people, but are saying something so much more about an entirely different thing. Mm -hmm. I think that's really just the fun part about writing. And then with Blood Type, you talked about how the title and just the making of the project was elements of yourself, like your blood type, part of your DNA. Mm -hmm. With Resonance, I remember reading that it was really about like the warmness of just music and how you felt. How did you come up with that title? Yeah, Resonance always feels like, to me, it almost feels like very colorful, um, that that word. And then at the same time, like from a uh, production standpoint, like if something has resonance, it's a frequency that sounds a certain way that's almost like it's... It's it's hard to explain because I'm not like a sound engineer, but it's like a, it's an effect in in audio resonance. And then obviously if something resonates with you, it has resonance. Um, So it's like the duality of those two words in the different contexts is very much like a part of why I named it that. 
and yeah i mean I, i'm a producer i'm also a songwriter and singer and i think like those that idea really kind of sat in a great place with that name and then we get into the first track french riviera I remember reading how you were saying that this was a song about being comfortable with yourself and honest with like your outlook on life. Yeah. But when I listen to it, I almost feel like you're writing a letter to somebody. Interesting. Like you're almost talking to this fake person. So when it comes to the idea behind the song, was it more so looking at yourself as a fake person or looking at somebody else as a fake person and kind of finding your outlook within that? Hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I guess I kind of wrote it in a way that felt like I was I was kind of writing it some of the words that would make sense like almost like i was writing it to a fake person but i think that i kind of wrote it also as just kind of like a sentiment to how i feel about myself because i'm born and raised in like midwest america and i'm black and i've always just done things that i wanted to do not because i was trying to prove anything to anyone i just wanted to do things and I think that like I was very much deterred from that growing up and that was from like black kids and white kids so it wasn't really like any type of thing but I think because of that I've always kind of battled with myself about like identity and just being comfortable with myself when it comes to just doing things like whether it was like yeah like swimming or playing the flute or just like any of these things that I've done that I kind of had to second guess myself about so with that said I think like the title and like the sentiment of like so you want to be bad but my skin is my apparel it's kind of like living out those things that kind of um, might exhibit some other type of perspective even if it's yeah it's not the the norm or the expectation of like what I would be but I'm, I'm living it out anyway, you know? It's like, I'm just like a person, you know? And it's just like, yeah, I think it's more of an anthem of just being comfortable in your own skin. I think the fake person thing is important too because this project really has an interesting theme of like growth yeah. and how important that is. And I think as you kind of, a lot of people when they kind of go through their teenage years and their early 20s, you're made up of all these things that, you think are so true and so important and then as you kind of get a little older and kind of come into yourself you're like oh wow like that doesn't even I mean for, yeah. for lack of a better word that doesn't even resonate with me anymore yeah. like that doesn't make sense so it, it's very easy to look back on who you were and be like oh that's a fake person so yeah. I, th I think that's an interesting story not only for you personally with your background yeah. but also just as a person going through life and kind of growing and it's like oh that person that was a fake person yeah, like you almost <laughs> feel like that sometimes you're just like wait this wasn't even me but i was like doing stuff to like make it feel like okay because i was just like really young and didn't have any other people to like kind of give me perspective <laughs> yeah it's cool it's very therapeutic how did you approach the production on that one? Man, I had this little like guitar line, this ding, 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 ding. It's like going in the song and I just loved how it sounded. It was like a sample that a, a friend of mine had actually sent me like a long time ago. I found it in my, my sound library and I was just like, this is awesome. And then I sat down and I had this like little like bubbly sounding kind of like loop on Ableton that I had made and it just sounded great. And then I just kind of like, I don't know, I just made, I made it like pretty fast. I think sometimes you just like, when you're making stuff and it's like you get that a bit of inspiration, you just like follow it through. And it was one of those seven to eight hour production days where I just like sat there and just like made it work. And yeah, I had a good time making that one. It was cool. When you say sample, like an actual sample or like a sample that he had played? Oh, like... a sample that he had played. Oh, okay, dope. So it was like a guitar and then he ran it through, um, just some some type of like hardware that he had at home mm -hmm. and then he sent it to me and it was actually not even like I don't think he meant to do it mm -hmm. it was like this weird like off kilter thing and then I just time warped it shout out Ableton and then uh made it into the song yeah it's almost like the counterpoint melody to like the entire thing itself and I love to do that kind of stuff I'm, I'm very melodic so 
I just like to find those things. And then I think a lyric in that song that kind of strikes everybody is the participation medal. Because everybody wants to talk about millennials and our participation medal culture. What were you thinking when you wrote that line? Oh, man. Yeah. I mean, that's like pretty on the nose there. I mean, I guess like people really want to feel comfortable at any point, which makes sense. Like you want to feel comfortable. Like everyone's, I want to feel comfortable. But I think that sometimes it comes at a cost to people's willingness to to learn about themselves. Because if you don't learn about yourself, then you're going to grow up to be a childish person. And I think that that's something that we don't talk about enough because, well, to be fair, it's something we don't talk about enough because we're already at such a low bar in terms of intellect and, <laughs> and discussions. So like, I don't even really have to to go there, but it's just like, you know, I, I like to hit every every part of the discussion because I think, you know, especially for personal growth, it's like really important. Now, I think that it's important too because you think about like, okay, participation medal can mean like validation, exactly, but yeah. it also means you tried exactly. and trying is an important part of no, growth. Totally. So it's kind of like, okay, do you need to feel validated or do you need to actually try? And I think that people go through kind of both of those parts of growth. 100%. And I think it's important, you know, I think it's important that we nurture that in people. So I, it's not like I'm against that in any way. It's more of just, uh, it's just something I'm pointing out, rather. That leads us to Call Me. Yeah. Oh, man. I think the beautiful thing about your music is it almost has different interpretations. People can kind of take things, take parts of things and have that resonate with them and, right. you know, take it in different ways. You only want to hear the good news. You and I never played by the same rules. I took a look inside the pantry. Close enough to know a bagel understands me more than expected. No plans, happy endings. Keep the fuck out of my mansion. I kind of see that one as like someone wanting to be with you for the fame and kind of like getting into this space and being like oh well I thought it was just because you're famous but sometimes I listen to it and I almost feel like you're almost talking to your fans what was it like writing that one? yeah yeah that's so true I mean that was a fun record because like it is almost like the dichotomy of it feeling like okay we have all these great things going on but and, and there's like so many great things that we people can relate to in life when it comes to like f fandom and like being famous and things like that but i think that it's just interesting to observe like the the culture around it because sometimes it can be like for lack of a we well, yeah, just quote it like you know get the fuck out of my mentions if you follow my lead it's like very much a situation where it's important to have dialogue and tell your story to the people or like to the people you look up to and that is important it's all relating back to like the idea of just kind of like like kind of like finding yourself in a way and and how and knowing how important that is when you have people that you look up to and, and people that that you aspire to be like but at the same time you are someone else you know um so it is just a, a fun point that i wanted to embark on and then like call me by name Call me your savior, fell for the fame. It's all right, it's okay. It's almost like you can very much approach this this kind of space in a way that's um very it's very personal, but also you just want to recognize that it has to be from within yourself at the end of the day. Mm. Yeah. Very much so, because if it's from anywhere else, it's not going to feel good. It's not going to last. It's just not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Like, it literally has to come from you, and you have to be comfortable with it. Exactly. And that's hard. It's not always easy. Now, another kind of theme that we'll get to throughout the project is this interesting theme of breakfast foods. We'll talk about that a little bit more, but before we get to that, close enough to know a bagel understands me. I kind of take it kind of surface, but I know you meant it a little deeper, but just as far as... I think of this Postmates commercial. There's this Postmates commercial where all of her delivery people know her pet's names when they come and they drop off the food. And then her boyfriend comes over and she says something about her pet and yeah. her boyfriend's like, who? I think of that to where it's like, okay, these Postmates people know me better than my boyfriend. And it's like, for you, like, I know that a bagel understands me more than whoever you're talking about in that. So what was that line to you? Yeah, that was, uh, that was fun too. It's like uh, the simplicity of a bagel is great. You know, it's like it's got one job, you know, and there's not many other things that it does other than it like satisfies your like craving or you're like you're like hungover and you need to like not feel the way you're feeling. And so like that's a very immediate thing as opposed to 
someone else who you might have feelings for, but then like something happens or like in this case, like a fan or, or like a person that you admire, like maybe doesn't necessarily fit the way that you thought they might. So, um, yeah, that was really it. It is very simple, you know, of a line, but it's, it's just, I think it's pretty fun and like kind of almost like self-explanatory in that way. It's like, you know, a bagel understands me. Like, look at this <laughs> simple thing, you know? Now we got to talk about the breakfast food theme. Yeah, I didn't, I actually am not aware. I might, I might not be aware of this. So that, of course, leads <laughs> us to Crowned. Yeah. And in the Crowned video, there's a million waffles. Oh, yeah. Are you a breakfast guy? Are you a waffle guy? Yeah. said you didn't even notice okay. it but i feel yeah, like yeah, there's yeah. a okay. breakfast theme there it is, is that on purpose the, is it, it is, unconscious yes it is on purpose the waffles are related to this little term i coined called lego my ego mm. and that is kind of just like my thing so the waffles are just kind of like a way of showing that because it's just like the ego waffles that's as far as the, the breakfast theme goes, but I, I think there's definitely a waffle theme there. I love it. That video is so gorgeous. What was it like oh, making that one? It was really cool. Oh yeah, Francesca's not here right now, but he, uh, my drummer, actually owns a restaurant in Brooklyn called Concrete, and so we shot the whole video there in like 4 a.m. in the morning, and just like all before, you know, he was getting the bagels and all his <laughs> things for the shop, and then, yeah, we just shot it in like four hours. And just like basically did different versions of me. We set up the entire restaurant and then I just sat in 13, yeah, 13 spots throughout the restaurant. And then we just like had it all set up and yeah, it was a fun, quick shoot. And then we just, we put it in the words after and like little bouncing waffle, which is a fun thing we added in. And uh, the whole video and the whole concept was like, just it was a lot of fun to just like kind of display and then i kind of interpret that song as being in love with someone who basically wants to be a they used to call it a trophy wife now they kind of call it instagram model i kind of think of them as one in the same mm -hmm. when writing that what was your thought process yeah i think it is very much just kind of like a instant gratification type of song where it's like you're kind of battling with it because i think everyone has egos and everyone has these like these demons that they uh are trying to like buckle with but it's kind of like I never like to preach about anything and I think that like that's the one thing that that I try to like I like to say things but I like to say them in a way that's like reflective so like got me thinking of ways to pray for my sanity or my vanity it's like they're both kind of just like self-reflecting kind of things where I think it's it's a lot easier for people to feel like they can relate to that in a way it's like stating something almost in a way that is maybe coded but can like be easily interpreted if you kind of like listen to what I'm talking about. So that song and like the idea of being crowned is almost like you're being you're being bestowed, like you're being put in the situation in some cases willingly, in some cases unwillingly based upon what you're doing with your life. And so like yeah, in short, I guess the whole visual representation is almost like me battling with different versions of that with myself. You mentioned something that I was going to bring up as far as got me praying for my sanity that flips to got me praying for my vanity. That is just so striking because we kind of at this point hold them as one in the same, yeah. which is kind of sad, but it is what it is. And it almost feels like the switch up kind of happens almost as you get further into the song and as you get further into this experience as far as like okay if this person is all about their vanity now i'm kind of slipping into it too was that the idea behind it or what was the idea behind it yeah i just wanted to i think sanity is in a lot of ways mental health right you're just trying to like be aware of that and understand the importance of that and then vanity is like it's more of a derivative thing of 
sanity because it's like we're all going to be vain in some ways but i mean maybe not all of us i don't know but like a lot of people so i think it's more of a realistic kind of approach to it almost like coming to terms with the fact that we are going to have some form of insanity because mm-hmm. the definition of it is repeating something more than once expecting different results mm-hmm. and plenty of people do that yeah it's almost like i'm i'm accepting that we're going into this tunnel and then the vanity part is almost like okay well we can definitely like admit that things aren't like always going to be great but like you know we're, we're working through it you know, it's a, it's almost like a realistic or more realistic version. I love that. That thought of acceptance is, is super cool. Thank you. That leads us to smoke. I bend a whole lot of cards, seen a whole lot of bars as they walk my way. Stay reaching for the stars and a whole lot of cards with a broken ass tree. But don't you blow your smoke at me. No, don't you blow your smoke. Kind of using a casual relationship with like smoke and fire metaphors, which one kind of came first when you're writing where you're like, okay, I want to talk about a casual relationship or was it like the smoke and fires? Like, how did that come to be? I mean, it started just with a casual relationship because like I was kind of on the outs of like a relationship, long relationship. And uh, I just kind of wanted to make a song that was more just kind of like more free. It was kind of like the song for me that was like kind of just like yeah we all kind of just like fuck around but at the same time don't blow smoke up my ass you know i just think it's so important like just call it what it is like exactly. we don't have to play these games about what what we think like no it, it is what it is and i think that that was such an important thing to say and i think that the metaphor of smoke and fire like, fits so well like yeah. it's just genius oh thank you anything else you want to tell the people about resonance oh man i guess it was a fun little project it was like for me very much a, a, like a nice stepping stone between blood type and then now this new one table of context because it was kind of like taking a lot of the points in my production that that were like kind of new frontier for me and then also like coupling that with my new found like obsession with writing because like i wasn't always writing until last two years or so it was just like a fun way to to kind of like stretch out a little bit because I think with blood type that was like almost like I don't know if the right word is premonition but like almost like it just happened really really quickly and it all just kind of like came together but then resonance was kind of like that almost kind of like my my new perspective on on writing and then also just on production and like yeah just trying something different and yeah Hope you enjoy it. And then you mentioned Table of Context. I remember in an interview a couple months ago, you were talking about how you're trying to decide is it going to be four, five, six, and then you put on Instagram that it's like basically done. Yeah. What do you want to tell the people about that one? Yeah. So that one is definitely going to be some acoustic, kind of more minimal production, but there are also going to be some, some bangers on there. Mm-hmm. Um, and... I think I'm discussing a lot of the, a lot of similar things, but I'm just doing it in a little bit of a different way. Like when it comes to the production, I didn't also fully produce this record. I did some some collabs, so I didn't really collaborate that heavily on on the last one or two. So yeah, it'll be interesting. It's coming together. I don't want to say like too much, but just know that we're excited. We can't wait. <laughs> oh, man, appreciate that. No problem. Straightforward and to the point. Thank you so much. Thank you. No problem. And thank you so much for checking out this episode. If you enjoyed it, make sure to hit that follow or subscribe button on whatever you're listening on. And you're probably going to want to click that because I have another segment called Opening Up Coming with Cautious Clay pretty soon. And then reach out to me. Let me know what your favorite part was or just say hi. I'm on Twitter at Special Says and on Instagram it's at Special Says as well. As always, this episode is dedicated to Marlon. Do what you can to stop senseless acts of gun violence.